aujourd'hui. Hello everyone, so welcome to list 3 of 5 of the year. Of course, as you see from the title, these are my favorite video games of 2022. So of course this list isn't definitive anyway. I'm not saying these are the absolute best games or the Game Awards got it wrong, anything like that. These are just my personal favorite games, the ones that hit me the hardest, the ones that I enjoyed the most. And yes, the my 10 favorites. And of course, there's going to be an honorable mention in this list as well, right before I reveal my number one pick. But yes, without further ado, let me count down all of my favorite games of 2022. So this one was just so much fun. It was so goofy in so many ways, and I found the cutscenes absolutely hilarious. I found the level design was really, really cool, and a lot of the ways that you could just explore, build new stuff, find all the new costumes, things like that, and so many characters that you're able to play as, I found very, very cool. Of course, um, all the contents between episodes 1 to 9 and each episode giving you at least like an hour, hour and a half of gameplay was something great. So there was a lot of time that you could put into this game and definitely a lot of value within the game. So it's very, very fun again to just absolutely hilarious and goofy in the Lego style of all the games. But I highly recommend it. I had a ton of fun with it. So if you're a Star Wars fan or any fan of any of the Lego games, this is of course a must be on your list if you haven't played it already. Next one I have, of course, this is an indie game and uh, this is studio's very first game. It was really, really cool in the world that they were able to craft with something super unique in terms of it's, again, very almost like Blade Runner post-apocalyptic future style. It was very, very cool finding out what happened to the humans of this world. And again, too, just holding in the animals was something. It was a story that was very, very heart touching in a lot of ways and really sunk into that feeling of isolation. They just told a very very beautiful story and of course being able to run around play as a cat and knock paint cans off and um annoy the people trying to clean it up was something absolutely hilarious <laughs> very very fun but um i found this game had a very very good story very very good mechanics there is quite a lot to do lots of side quests and again robots to help and again too just uncovering the mystery of this world was something very very cool and i don't know how they'll be able to do a sequel but i'm very very excited to see more of what the studio can do come in the future so yeah these games are just absolutely bonkers crazy wild dumb but very very fun <laughs> in so many ways the cutscenes are awesome i found they were able to weave and tell a very very good story within this and it had very very tight and awesome gameplay all the new abilities that they're able to add in for bayonetta and of course all of the people kicking ass <laughs> were very very great um really good enemies and just dynamic characters that they able to bring into this as well and i found it had a very good ending that could be very conclusive for the bayonetta franchise if they want to move on or do spin-offs from here run out it was just a very very well crafted game i had a lot of fun with it goofy silly as hell but fun as hell so i haven't played a kirby game in a long long time but the forgotten land was something that was just absolutely fun um i had so much fun playing it and showing it uh, to my girlfriend and just again to the ways that they're able to craft this world and make it a lot more sandboxy and add abilities to kirby that's just switch up the gameplay in a lot of ways is really really fun whether it be turning into a wind turbine so you could boat around and <laughs> find all the secrets within the world all the secret levels was really really fun the car missions i found were absolutely just great and again to kirby being able to take on all of these again shapes and forms and use these powers I found they incorporated it in a way that was really, really fun and um, just changed up the levels in so many ways that were great. Um, the very the almost body horror um, also <laughs> to like cosmic horror ending that they did was something completely unexpected, but I found it was absolutely hilarious and very, very fun. It was a great game. I love the story and I'd love to see more Kirby games down the line take on, again, the style that they did within this one. It was very, very fun. Kirby's awesome. Usually still one of my favorite characters in all of gaming. And yeah, I've just it was an awesome game. If you're a fan of Kirby, you haven't played it in a little while, definitely pick this one up on your Switch. So this is one of the definitions of going bigger and better in every single way for the sequels of your games. Um, Plague Tale Requiem just really honed in on the horrors of, of course, just the worlds that these characters live within. And it was absolutely terrifying all the sequences like uncharted like sequences with the rats were absolutely crazy you could see the bigger budget that the studio got and they went 
heavy into it in so many ways um gameplay was just a lot tighter stealth was a lot tighter combat was great and there was so much that you could do more so than you were able to do in the first one they just really fine-tuned the first game and brought it up it's like so many levels of it's just great for a sequel the story was great still absolutely brutal and just a gob punch by the end of it too i don't want to say anything for spoilers sake but great game just such a good sequel and how sequels really should be um i we're not gonna get sequels i think in the in the future of this but they wrapped it up in a way that was really really good and if this is a two and done absolutely great franchise that they're able to create here and yeah just an amazingly brutal beautiful terrifying worlds that's again they just did the absolute best that they possibly could with the sequel and it paid off in big big ways again talking about really tight combat i love sifu and it was just such a really cool unique story and i love just again to the leveling up system within this and the ways that you have to be very very careful with uh how much you die within this game um i just found that whole thing where um you die you come back stronger you get more abilities that's how you level up your character it was so so cool but you have to be very very careful with again too just how many times you're going to uh kick the or bite the dust um in a way of speaking but the combat was super tight um the story of course was just very very simple but i found all the boss fights and everything like that were just very very well crafted very very well done um it's something that i went back and played a few times to the new game plus and everything on because it was just awesome <laughs> the level design was great and changed so so much not just in terms of his texture but the gameplay style within all these levels was really really cool um being overwhelmed by so many enemies and having to switch your stance their play style it just really kept you on your toes the entire game and one of the most unique combat games that i've ever played or fighting games um it's more so a combat game than it's a fighting game but definitely pick up sifu it is very challenging but in ways that are very very rewarding when you can get past level to level and it was just really fun to learn the mechanics of this game and go through it play it and uh, kick a lot of ass <laughs> going through it again indie games that were absolutely awesome love midnight Fight <laughs> express it was so cool and again just so unique and hyper violent hyper active just high octane the entire time um there was a lot for an indie game too that went on game pass there was so much more i think it was like 40 plus levels um within this game that are all just absolutely crazy giving you new weapons to go and tackle each and throughout um definitely inspiration from the hotline miami games where um you can't take really too too many hits within it but um the character customization that they're able to add into it just added that much more replayability and accessibility um for your characters all the weapons that you're able to bring in and find as you go through again to just each and every level that brought so many well like new enemies every single time that uh every single level was something very very cool and they made good use of again to just overwhelming you in ways having you have to be very conservative when it comes to your ammo the durability of your weapons it was just crazy <laughs> crazy good um again to every single level felt different from the last in terms of its structure the mechanics it would bring in to go against you um into having snipers and helicopters that'll come and rain down fire and you while you're fist fighting a bunch of goons was very very cool um it was absolutely hilarious it was a very self-aware in its style um again to inspiration from like hala miami john wick things like that definitely came into this and it was just so goofy so hilarious as easily i i do believe this was a game that made me laugh genuinely the most while playing it's the comedy's great the action's great um again so it's just high octane for like i think it's like about eight hours it took me to get through this indie game so absolutely crazy and awesome highly recommend this one again too it's on game pass so if you can play it that way great but it's definitely worth the full price um whatever you see it at i think it was like 30 35 dollars highly recommend picking this one up again too it's easily one of my favorite games of the year and um the best combat game that i played this year by far
So again, too, talking about going bigger and better in most every single way, Horizon Forbidden West was amazing. Aloy is one of the best characters in all of gaming. She just grew so much within this game and um, yeah, loved her character, loved the direction this game went in and just expanding the world's in so many ways and again to just her whole journey west and going through in the ruins of san francisco las vegas all these things just made for some absolutely beautiful visuals this game is stunning to look at every single way you turn your head within it it was really really cool love the art direction love the graphics the combat got a lot tighter all the abilities that they gave you were so so cool and again so just taking on the machines of the slash old new world was something amazing and again to just going a little bit deeper into the story of how the world fell was something really really cool um I, it didn't expand a whole lot off of the game, but there was enough there to get into just broaden the horizons and perspective in a lot of ways. Um, again, to just really focusing on the individual clans and just to the politics between all of them was something very, very well crafted, very, very well done. The story is just absolutely amazing in this game in so many ways and so personal, so great for Aloy. But again, to just when it comes to the visuals and the combat of this, it was a damn near perfect game in so many ways and easily deserves to be in anyone's top three and easily deserves to be in anyone's PlayStation library. So Horizon, um, Forbidden West, and of course Zero Dawn are games that if you have a PS4, or PS5, highly recommend you pick up and play for yourselves. They're absolutely great. And again, too, one of the sequels that does it right so it's bigger, better in every single <laughs> sense of the word for the sequel. So yes, by my number two pick, I feel like most people are going to be able to pin down my number one pick, but Elden Ring was something absolutely special. Um, I've had such a hard time with the Souls games just because I do absolutely suck at them in so many ways. And I found this one was a lot more friendly in terms of, um, I can't too, just... I was able to adjust my play style in so many ways and really fine tune my experience within this game that actually got me to get through a Souls game. I haven't done that since Demon's Souls and the first Dark Souls. Those were the only ones that I ever beat, but I had a lot of fun playing this one. It felt so rewarding in ways, well, yes and no in that sense to uh, go through this world, but the boss fights were absolutely incredible in so many ways. Even though a lot of the side ones are just rinse and repeat different versions of right, multiple of um, certain <laughs> versions of the characters, they're all just so intense and just absolutely rely on you to, again, have your reaction speed right, learn the mechanics of the game. Um, it gives you absolutely nothing to go off of. But um, again, to just learning this world, all the amazing lore that again to George R. R. Martin kind of gave the blueprints to and seeing how they were able to expand that was a great direction for this franchise. Um, I know they want to work with more authors <laughs> of kind of that stature going on. And I feel like again, to just for crafting their world, it was the bright choice, the most perfect choice that they could have made. And yeah, there's just, <laughs> there's not really anything I can take away from this game it's perfect it's absolutely perfect in every single sense of the word high difficulty curve but again to just with the lore and everything that they're able to piece together within elden ring um yeah just absolutely amazing there's not much more i can say that i didn't already say in my review of this game but it's just jeff's kiss it was perfect So my one honorable mention is Sonic Frontiers. I haven't beat it yet. Playing through it right now on the PS5 and it's just, yeah, I'm having a blast with it. It's very, very cool. Um, again, so if you're a fan of Sonic, it definitely changes the formula and keeps it the same in a lot of ways. Still getting used to the controls in a lot of ways, but it's very, very fun. I'm enjoying the story a lot so far, enjoying this new open world sandboxy Sonic style that they got going on. And if Sega can keep again to changing the bar like this, um, having all the fun levels that go back and back and back and grind through again to the Sonic world, I think they have um, a winning formula on their hands here. There's a bit more fine tuning that they need to do, but it's a very, very fun game. High octane in a lot of ways too. And yeah, it's just very, very fun. So of course, if you know me, <laughs> God of War Ragnarok was something absolutely special. And um, for me to 
in the debate of kind of the Elden Ring God of War world, I feel like the combat and everything is on par. Of course, Elden Ring offers more in terms of content and more to do, but I just feel like the narrative within God of War really sold the number one spots, the number one game of the year for me. Um, it's just an amazingly told story that completely builds off of everything that came before it's there's even mentions to playstation all stars or even like uh, mortal Kombat's <laughs> like kratos's journeys throughout that they talk about um with freya and mamir but the characters are just so well realized and just did an amazing job with ragnarok with norse mythology and i hate to see like it come to an end because they just did an incredible job showing ragnarok an incredible job showing the gods and how cruel they are but how they differ from greek mythology and Kratos easily having the best like redemption arc in most all of fiction was something incredible to watch being grounded by himself and the whole world around him the new world was really really great it's just so many amazing things that they're able to tell within the story that again too it's one of the best narratives I've ever played in a game um easily deserves to go down as one of the best PlayStation games of all time if not one of the best games of all time and God of War will go down as one of the best video game franchises of all time thanks to well again all of its amazing entries but especially God of War 2018 and now God of War Ragnarok I can't wait to see what they do in the future of this game's the realms of mythology that they're going to take the characters to but yeah, holy moly. Um, <laughs> play through the God of War franchise, all the games. It's so worth it. And again, too, this being almost the culmination of just decades of storytelling was absolutely incredible and special to see. And yeah, Kratos, again, too, solidifies himself as one of the best characters in all of gaming. Trace is up there, too. Freya was amazing. There's just so much within this game that, again, I can't wait to see where they go from it but so much content so many things that you can do within this game so many hours i was able to put into it that just felt so rewarding so amazing and yeah um there's a few levels that are a little slow a little tougher to get through um more so on the treya side but it's just again too the narrative even through the slower sections was just undeniably incredible so please in the comments down below let me know what you thought of my list be be nice <laughs> and of course let me know what your favorite games of the year were love seeing that so leave it down in the comments down below and of course if you like this list definitely give it a thumbs up and you can check out everything i do on this channel with all links and playlists up top here for convenience sake thank you for subscribing and turn that little ring around so you know when i upload new videos if you want to check out the description of this video on my channel bio there's a link to the media mountain which is in my discord where we talk about movies video games comic books tv pretty much everything that's awesome in this world so you can definitely join that amazing community Community, help make it even more amazing than it is already and yeah just awesome guys sky through eyes I see a world behind them no more time sinking into the silence reaching out for something